Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Our guests tonight are artist Bruce Cohen and actor Oded Kasserer. Artist Bruce Cohen was born and raised in Santa Monica, and he earned a BA at UC Santa Barbara and attended UC Berkeley and UCLA. He's been exhibited in galleries and museums across America and is repped by John Bergruen in San Francisco and Austin Art Projects in Palm Desert. Bruce, when did you plan to be an artist? <laughs> I never planned it, it just happened. Oh, you never planned it? Then what classes were you taking at university? Well, I was painting before I started university, and so that was just the direction I went early on in high school. And Oh, you started painting in high school? Yeah. And, and how, did you have a great art teacher? Who, what was your impetus for, for painting? Uh, just probably what my mother influenced us with, and I got a scholarship one summer to go to Otis when I was a high school student. Really? Studied with Charles White there. Oh, great, yeah. And great. Um, I never thought about it, I just always did it. So. You were just always painting with, Charles White was a great, great draft, draw, draftsman, yeah. Wonderful, yeah. And so did man. you use that in your work? Uh, yeah, I was always interested in drawing, and I studied with Howard Warshaw up in Santa Barbara and drew the figure for four years. And so it was, I was going to ask you who your teachers were and what kind of classes you took. At Berkeley, what did you do? Who were you? I studied with, with Elmer Bischoff. So that was really a treat. And I had studied with Paul Warner in Santa Barbara, but he was living up in Berkeley at that time. And so, you know, I, I got to meet all of the Bay Area painters like Nathan Oliveira and Joan Brown was teaching at Berkeley. And that, that was so great because they had such a distinctive style, didn't they? Each one had their own style, but it was such a, as a group, you could pick it out. Yeah, I was very attracted to the, those painters and always loved Deben Korn's work, so that was a big influence on me when I was getting going. Your work looks a little bit like that to me, it looks very Paul Warner-ish, and I don't know if that's a good thing to say or a bad thing to say, but I can see the influence. Yeah, absolutely. He was a huge influence, and uh, you know, I loved David Hockney's work at that period in the 70s, early 70s. And but David wasn't teaching at any of those schools, No, was but I, I would see his shows at Nick Wilder's gallery, oh, and right. that had a big influence on me back then. What um, were the departments, were, were the art departments, were they flourishing? Were they good art departments at Berkeley and Santa Barbara and uh, where else, UCLA? Santa Barbara was particularly good and that's where I spent most of my time. And I was in a was small it? program called the College of Creative Studies that was started by Marvin Mudrick, who is the literature professor also. Uh -huh. And it was for people who didn't fit into a very academic sense of the university, but he felt could still thrive in that environment. And so I, s I had a lot of great professors there. And in the art department, in the creative? No, it was its own program within the university. Oh, it was? So it did was you organized much more like Santa Cruz was in those days. There, it was all pass-fail and... Oh, it was at that time they yeah. could do that? Yeah, it was very unique. Did you do writing? Did you write? Was that part yeah. of it too? Yeah, you had to take math and science. But you still had the regular uh, right. requirements? Yes, a lot of art history. And you could take classes in letters and science as well. So it was a good education. And I studied with Charles Garabidian for almost three and a half years up there. He, he, and I'm where still was friends. Charles? He lived here, but he would tr uh, commute up there. To and Santa Barbara? 
and he was a marvelous teacher. I didn't realize that they had such a great art department there. That's why I'm glad that you're telling us who else was there, because Jazz Garbedian is one of our favorites, of course. Yeah, I still see him, and he's a great friend. And he has the same studio he's had for, what, 40 years? Yeah, in Washington and La Brea <laughs> know, there. Yeah, no, he's, he's... They're going to, like, build up all these things around him, and he's still going to have his little still purple an, door. <laughs> he's still an inspiration, you know. It's great to know him. Yeah, and, uh, but he's very literate, too. I mean, he very. reads a lot, and his work comes out of that uh, same genre that you're talking about that yeah. Santa Barbara had. Yeah, now he's very involved in mythology, and yes. I love that about his work. Did he teach like that at the time? You know, I can't pinpoint it, but I felt like I got a lot from him. And um, So who else was there? We had, we had Warshaw. Yeah, Howard Warshaw was terrific. He used to do all those animal heads. Yeah. And then and you had Garabedian, who else? David Trowbridge was there. Oh. Um, John McCracken came. Wow. Um, do you remember Mike Kanemitsu? Yes, I do. He, he taught there for a while. Um, and then David Trowbridge knew a lot of contemporary young LA artists and he brought them up as guest lecturers like Al Rupesberg came and uh, Greg Card. I was going to ask you what your influences are. You've come up with all these influences, but then how do you call what's going to influence you, and how does your work then take form? I think just through the process, you just keep working, and hopefully, luckily, <laughs> you find your voice, you find what means something to you, and you eliminate the other things, <laughs> and, and that I think that's the process of discovering yourself. What um, do you call your style? What would we call that? I looked myself up on uh, Google once and I was categorized as a architectural realist, still life realist. A realist. So I think maybe I'll use that as my uh, identification. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? So you talk about this style, architecture, still life. They're very flat. Do you do setups? Do you set up like a bowl of lemons? To paint, or do you do it from your memory? 50-50. I mean, I, I, I sort of work in a collage fashion where I take a lot of elements that I want in the picture, and then I draw them from sometimes from life, sometimes I use photography. Then I oh, put them on my... Oh, you photography, too? Sometimes. And then I put them all on my desk in my studio, and I invent <coughs> a drawing out of them. Do you drape the table? Of course. You do? Yeah. I, I well, can't invent everything, but some things I can. And so they and become sort of artificial in a good way, I think, because I think that's, I was very attracted to surrealism, and I think there's an element that, where they're not, they're sort of real, but they're not, they're still in the imaginary world, and I think that comes out of the inventive quality, where I'm not painting from observation, I'm, you know, working from just directly onto the painting. A lot of the paintings have windows, mm -hmm. and you look out, you see the clouds, you see clouds in different uh, formations and right. different colors. Are those made up out of your? Yes. Th they are. Yeah. Because the one, one of my favorites is the bed with the pillows all crumpled up and those dark clouds outside. Talk about that a little bit. Um. <coughs> I think that was just a lucky painting that <laughs> <laughs> came to me one day when I just sort of saw that image. Was the bed there? The bed was there, and I just um, started drawing it, and it led to the clouds and the windows, and I, I don't know, I can't really say exactly how I arrived at it. But, how, uh, how long did it take you to paint that? Uh, my whole career. <laughs> it all right, up because it's no. everything you know, right, goes right. into that one no, painting, but I, I, physically. Maybe two months, you know. So do you if I'm if I'm fast and if things go together. Sometimes they sit in the studio and I rework them months later. I never know exactly when they're finished. But. What kind of materials do you use? What kind of paint? I mean, I draw with graphite and charcoal, then I do color chalk pastel studies to get light and color I ideas, and then I translate to, I underpaint in acrylic and then overpaint oh. in oil. So we have a lot of big process going on yeah. here. So two months is a short time probably, because right. you do the drawing first, 
then you do a pastel right. interpretation. Do you stick pretty much to those things as you start to paint, or does your no, imagination No, once go? I start drawing the, on the canvas, <laughs> then I keep it very open. But I need something to just get me a point of departure to start with. So, so let's talk about the materials. We photography. Mm -hmm. What else? Drawing. What, what, on what kind of paper? Xerox paper, you know. Oh, it can be anything? Anything, Oh, yeah. you don't have, like, it's not a specific? No. And then the pastels? But the pastels I do on etching paper. I like that, so. And then do you keep those as studies? I do. Everything do you keep? I do. <laughs> <laughs> and then what kind of brushes? Uh, I use uh, Kalinsky sable brushes, so they're quite smooth and refined. And you are might, they small or? But both. I mean, you can get a large flat and you can get fine, fine points to do very detailed work. Do, do you need to travel to get inspiration for any of your work? Or it helps. Do, does it? Like, <laughs> sure. like what? Do you, where, where? I think going to New York is always inspiring, you know. Oh, but that's energy building. Yeah. I, I'm talking about for your images because you are, and do you use the same, say, lemons <laughs> in all the paintings or do you use those same Little, no, um, I, I just like the idea. Ceramics? Could you yeah, use well, ceramics? the ceramics came from my wife's work. That was her work, and oh. so I incorporate, incorporated it. And so you do use a, those. Yeah, and I time. always like the idea of the 17th century Dutch painters, use sort of the element of the everyday. And so I just walk around my house and use whatever's there, and I go to the farmer's market and buy food there, and if it's sitting on the counter and it looks right, I'll put it, incorporate it, or make a drawing, or but whatever. A lot of and then sometimes I sit, the drawings sit for a long time and I go back to them, and so I'm painting something out of season, so to speak. <laughs> because it's been so, <laughs> right. so long. Have you ever thought of teaching? No. You can't teach. I can't. <laughs> it's okay. hard enough to come here. <laughs> okay. it's hard. No, this is easy. What about all these art fairs? I know you've had like great dealers in the past, Patty Four and Betty Asher and Michael Cohn, and uh, I don't think Betty or Patty spent any time at art fairs. But I know nowadays your dealers seem to think that they have to go to art fairs. How do you feel about it? Um. Do you go to a lot of art fairs? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if they're in LA, I'll go, but not. I don't travel to them. But I guess that's the best way that business is conducted, so it, it's a necessary part of that whole world. If you were painting, say, for an, an art fair, um, would you paint a, a specific series or does all your work is like one big series? No, I never think about the marketing <laughs> of the paintings. I just, it doesn't come from that place at all. I just try to make the best work I can make and that's so they how don't I fall, personally. They don't fall into categories because they think sometimes you go like, well, I'm going to do these abstracts this time. Do you paint abstract? Mm, in my own way, I think. Is it? But yeah. I don't think your work is, your work is very realist. Well, I think there's elements that kind of can go in that direction in the work sometimes. Well, I think... I mean, I have to show you more specific paintings, but I think that I can push the flatness in that element. Is it. that it? You call it more of a flatness? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've, we've had seen some of your work on the screen today, uh -huh. and I'm so glad you came to talk to us. I know we twisted your arm, Bruce Cohen, <laughs> but we're glad you're here. Well, thank you for having me. And don't go away. We'll be right back with actor Oded Kasserer. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with playwright, performer, Oded Yosef Kasserer, who was born and raised in Tel Aviv, where he studied video production and editing at an art college there. So what brought you to L.A.? Well, I was actually following my love. Oh, this is like part of the I play, yes, <laughs> this is a story. Say yeah. your name for me though, the way you would say it if you were in Israel. 
Oded Yosef Kassiro. Okay, so I said it yeah. English pronunciation. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. So you followed a love to L.A. Yeah. Ah. It's actually, it is part of the play. And how did you, yeah. did it feel like Tel Aviv to you when you got here? No, Tel Aviv is tiny. Tel Aviv is kind of like <laughs> New York. Oh, more like but, New York? But without, uh, well, with worse traffic. <laughs> because I was thinking of the sea a little bit. Yeah, but you know what? In Tel Aviv, I lived like five minutes from the sea, and, and you can go in because it's warm. Here it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> and d did you go to the sea? Yeah, all the time. Oh, I you did all the, the time, because we live 30 minutes from the sea, and we never go to it. We never yeah. see it. No, I lived so close in Israel, I would walk all the time. I, I, would, I worked a night shift in a hotel, and in the morning, I would just sleep on the beach for a few hours, and then I was ready for the day. You're kidding, <laughs> really? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the hotels are all along the... Yeah, all along the, yeah, the beach. And how is it there? Have you been back? Yeah, I go all the time. I was actually there two months ago, surprising my mom on her uh, 86th birthday. Oh, how nice. Yeah, I've how never nice. done that before. I usually, you know, you prepare and everything. But every time I talk to her, she would be like, I miss you so much. And I'd be like, I don't know if I can come. <laughs> and finally, because, <laughs> you know, because I'm doing the show <laughs> and, and it's expensive and all that stuff. And finally, after one of the, her calls, I was like, thinking, I should go, she, you know, I want to go, and, and she misses me all day, and I just went by myself, and we spent two weeks together, it was really nice. So you, so you lived only in Tel Aviv, and I only in L.A., what about Germany? No, I lived in Amsterdam for a year. Oh, in Amsterdam, <laughs> yeah. because you sound very much like a German accent. I know, yeah, people tell me, people, when I was working as an animator, they, they always wanted me to say, I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, that's what I wanted to talk about was your animation. Because when you came to L.A., you started yeah. working. How long have you been here now? I've been here over 20 years now. And so you started as an animator. How yeah. did that happen? Well, I, I actually started as an editor. And after a few years of editing, I, I bought a little animation program at home on my Mac. And I was just playing with it. And so when the studio that I worked for closed, I was like, I have to find a job in animation, and I found a um, small studio where they were willing to teach me. Oh. And from that, I went to Sony, and then to Disney, and I was, I had oh, a, a very nice Oh, you went to all career. the big studios yeah. for yeah. An, another part of your story. But uh, you worked yeah. with Bob Zemeckis, who's yeah, really well known. Yeah, I worked uh, six years on all his uh, motion capture movies. You know, the ones where, where the actors actually have to wear this suit with uh, markers. And, and you put those on? Well, no, somebody else puts But, I mean, what do you do to the to Yeah, th those markers actually reflect light, uh -huh. and we capture the movement. That's why it's called motion capture. Oh, is that what they do? Yeah, you, yeah. So they put these on, and then... Yeah, and they have them on their face and everything, so they don't just lend their uh, voice like in regular animation, but they actually have oh. to move. They have to, do, they have to do the whole movie like a regular movie. Oh. It's pretty fascinating. So yeah. in 16 years, working in that genre. Did you teach people yourself? Were you a teacher in any way? Uh, a little bit because I always became like a, um, you know, like a supervisor of a group of people. Oh, so that's there was, yeah. yeah, so there was some teaching in it. And then did you have, did you ever write for those animated characters? You know what? I never wrote until four years ago when I actually started writing the Book of the Dead. I didn't know it was, that's what it's going to so be. So you never did animation writing, you never no, did anything? No. Well, did you take writing classes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't. And what do you write in what language? In English. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I, I dream in English. <laughs> <laughs> because you've accent. been here so long? Or with an accent? Be, because you've been here so long? Or did so. you speak English in because Israel? Of, well, yeah, you know, in Israel you speak English too. I mean, I started uh, English in uh, fifth grade. Now they start in second grade. Oh, right. And in, in, in Israel also, like, all the signs are in Hebrew, English, right, and right. Arabic. So, yeah, it's pretty, everybody pretty much speaks English. So, should we say officially you've changed careers? You've moved out of animation yeah. into writing? Into acting. Oh, into acting. Into okay. Acting. okay. Slash writing. <laughs> okay, so you're taking acting lessons? Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, yeah. I start. I start. Uh, How could you do that when you've been like so? I I mean, computer programs and things that are so uh, precise. Yeah, but when I started with animation, I started because I loved the creativity in it. And 16 years later, <laughs> I was doing more technical stuff and less creative. That's what I meant. Very technical. Yeah. yeah. So I actually longed for creativity, 
and I started painting and I started writing and then I got into Second City yeah, into you improv. See, did you do that? Yeah, I loved that. that oh, was the, I loved it so much. Being on stage and just being making a fool out of myself. Was oh, that so was good. Fun. What about live book acting? What is that? That's a, an academy that uh, I found. It's headed by uh, Alan Levine. He's the main teacher there. And I started learning with him. That was my first real acting class. Like the live book, yeah, live book, book academy. What yeah. do they teach? Uh, they teach uh, everything. You know, uh, he, he's he actually he teaches you scene study and monologues and uh, also preparation for auditions. You know, which is I, I always thought auditions were the worst thing in the world, and now I love auditioning. Well, you do. <laughs> I do. I really do. I, this is my time to shine. And so, how did you? get these acting roles then. You studied and you did all this and, and you've actually acted on screen and in the yeah. stage and... Yeah, you know, with time I started, you know, submitting myself. I had the uh, um, headshots made and, you know, uh, a little resume with not much in it. And I started getting student work and... Uh, oh, that's... Yeah, you, you know, stuff like that. Did you feel like you were too late starting or you just thought this was more of an exciting thing to do? There were moments where I would say to myself, how come I didn't do it when I was 20 or anything? Oh, earlier. But then I realized, you know, I'm in the right place in the right time. There's no other way. You chapter know, two. It is, yeah. <laughs> or maybe this is chapter two. three. Yeah, this is actually this is chapter, chapter three. three. It is, right? it this is. is yeah. Oded, chapter three, <laughs> the book of Oded. So um, we did get to the book of Oded, and we are at chapter two. Where is chapter one? Well, chapter one is, uh, the reason I actually called it uh, chapter two is because chapter one is from the time I was born till uh, a moment where I met someone. Chapter and one. That's chapter one. And then chapter <coughs> two is from the time I met that person throughout our relationship. And I wrote about that because I think it was, uh, it, it was very eventful in my life. There were a lot of events, there were a lot of stuff happening, a lot Things of challenges. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Like and like lots of offshoots too that yeah. you could write about. And also this is where I moved here, uh -huh. which was totally unexpected. I never thought I'm gonna do it. Is that right? And yeah. chapter three? Chapter three is amazing. It's is it? So it's not yes. to come. It's already here. Chapter three. Well, I I am in chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, writing chapter two actually gives me the the kind of like taste. I want to write chapter one too. But first, let's get over this, you know. So, so have you written chapter one? Not yet. Oh, no. So the only thing you've written so far is chapter two. Does yeah. it cover the Israeli military? Um, it's actually after that, but I talked about But were about you in it? Yes, yeah. I was in the You were in it because yeah. you, you had to. You have to, yeah. It's compulsory, and, and you do it. You don't even think about it. You're 18. You go to the army. You, you do three years. Some people do more. And then after that, you kind of start your life. So that's where you started chapter two. Yes. So does it start at coming to L.A. or leaving Tel Aviv? or? It actually, um, physically it starts on a very happy day of my life, but then I kind of go back and I tell the story of how I'm, I, I met my You do um, a back? You do ex. that? Yeah, yeah, and then I go through that. And then I, and I take the audience <coughs> with me on this journey because uh, I decided to write it in present time, you know. So when I talk, I don't say I was or I had. I say oh, you, I you, am. You are doing it right now. Yeah. And you're being directed by whom? Uh, by Sammy Wayne the Fourth. Sammy Wayne the Fourth. The Fourth yes. is an amazing director. I mean, he's. You know, when I first wanted to, uh, I talked to Oscar. Oscar is my producer, and I said, you know, I don't need a director. I can just do it myself. Because usually, one person plays. People think they know what they're going to do. They've yeah. written it. They're. I thought so too. Also, <laughs> being a little bit a cocky Israeli, I thought, oh, I know everything. But <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I think other bit. actors think that they can do it because why do I need a director? Exactly. And why do you need a director? Because I can. Mr. Cocky. <laughs> why do you need I a director? I know, no. Because I don't see it from the from that point of view. I see it from here. You know, the, the, when we already started working and I would say something, Sammy would stop me and tell me, why are you telling this story? And I would say, well, because blah, blah, blah. And he said, I didn't get that. I will be like, Oh, I get so it. So he's because, listening, yeah. right? And, and I had to change stuff, and I had to move stuff around, and I had to say things that I didn't think I, I should say. Well, do you think those are all like your inner things? You think that we know it because they're inner decisions yeah. and inner... 
it's actions. Inter- exactly, and also because I went through it, you know, this is my life. So it's all obvious to me. Right. But when I'm telling it out there, nothing is obvious. They're hearing it for the first exactly. time. Exactly. So, yeah. So does he move you around the stage? He move. yeah. He, that, that's another <laughs> Otherwise thing. Otherwise you would have just been standing there telling your story? Well, I, I brought pieces of, the, of my show when it was still kind of like in, 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 in pieces to my uh, um, acting class. And I would bring 10 minutes here. And I would just sit and tell the story. Yes. Which was nice. People liked it. But it's not enough, especially when it's an hour and 15 minutes, you know. You, and you where is it going to be? In a regular theater? It's going to be in a theater in a Studio City called Two Roads. It's a great theater. Two Roads? Yeah. It sits two about... Ro- two <coughs> Roads. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really a nice area. The Tohunga Village, uh-huh. an Aroma Cafe and a pizzeria oh, nice. and all that's beautiful there. And it sits about 60 people, so you it's not too big. It, you call it a workshop, though. You don't sit, you actually actually put on a production yeah we, we this is a real production with everything I mean with this displays and sounds and lights and everything the reason we call it a workshop is because we only put six shows and we want to also oh. we might converse a little bit with the audience and see what they're thinking and we'll be working on the show to make it better throughout those six so shows. you will be changing it Probably, yeah. I mean, you'll be like keep kind of rewriting it, right, as you yeah. go along. As we do, you know, we almost every rehearsal something mm-hmm. new happens, or, mm-hmm. or 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 a thought, or or sometimes even a word, and I and I go, oh, this word is really good here, you know. So I keep rewriting. But it. then, will you remember it? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. Did you have a great memory? So did you remember all these things? Um, or is it part of your training? I think it's it's both, and it's also when. Oh, and this is what Sam is really good at, at directing me, is having me be in the moment and not think about the words too much. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm in the moment, I'll give you an example. There was one line that was in the script and I never said it. And every time we would say, hey, why aren't you saying it? And we realized it's not the right line to say. That's so why you I would never just said miss it? it? I would miss it. So we, we omitted it because if I didn't <laughs> say it, it kind of, it didn't feel right. Uh-huh. You know, so... So when I mean, you wrote it, right? Yeah, you wrote it, but it was still wasn't right once you stood up there and yeah, exactly. Because when you write stuff, it's different. I think when you stand there and say it, and and you hear yourself, and you're kind of in the moment and all that. So 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 we're covering death and mortality, (laughs) (laughs) kind of, aren't we? Yes, yes, we're we're going and relationships, relationship, love, love. Which is, uh, you know, it's more than just love to other people. Uh, it's love to to parents, to family, to friends, and also self-love. To, s- to a yourself. Lot of that, yeah. And and uh, maybe yeah. that's part of like writing a line, and it wasn't really honest, and so, so you have to take it out because it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Because I think when, especially because I'm not a an experienced writer, and you know, it's interesting when I started writing it, I wasn't thinking what am I going to write. It was writing itself because it needed to come out. Yeah. You know, it was this one of those things that uh, had to come out, and it was like. Uh, I'm so glad because you needed to tell us today too. I think so. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks very much, Odette, and thank you for watching the Joan Quinn profiles. Keep writing to J A Q U I N N one at AOL.com, and we'll see you next time.